So what am I doing with this? Recently, or I guess not so recently, it's been a couple months now, I've been watching a lot of tech YouTubers like Linus Tech Tips, Paul's Hardware, a bunch of them making really tiny computers that are still kind of powerful in these mini ITX cases. So I figured I wanna make one for myself, but I don't wanna just make a tiny PC. I want to make it custom and, and make it look really cool. So I had the idea of why not tie it into HiQ and the whole tiny giant thing. So I'm gonna be making the tiny giant build. So the idea is that it's going to be a very tiny mini ITX computer that can still game with the best of them using all of the main components that my current PC has and just transferring it over. Only problem is my motherboard here is too big for the case and so is my power supply. So I went ahead and grabbed this X570i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi gaming motherboard from Gigabyte as well as the EVGA 650GM SFX power supply, which is little baby power supply. I've already gone ahead and put the power supply in the case itself just because it was the first component that I actually got in. But now that I have the motherboard, I can go ahead and start transferring everything over and I'm super excited to see how it comes out. As I'm recording this, I am still waiting on the vinyl decals to come in for decorating the actual outside side of the case, but I figured why not go ahead and actually put the system in the case first, make sure it runs, and then add the decals later. I was going to do a paint job with this, but honestly, I don't really have any experience in painting anything, and I didn't want to risk ruining something that I've already sort of invested my time and money into. So I figured with decals, at least if it doesn't look quite as good as I had hoped, I can always tear them off, make new ones, uh, maybe get some higher quality ones or something like that. I don't know. I just felt like it was the safer route to take. With all that said, I just got to go ahead and take take apart the old boy and uh, rip its guts out. It'll fit, but uh, Barely. You see that rat's nest of cables? That's what I like to call a problem for future Bry. I know it's bad luck to put the side panel on before it's done, before you boot it up, but I'm tired of looking at all these cables. Let's try that one more time and hope it wasn't a uh, foreshadowing of what's to come. Of course it pops out. Screw it. Hopefully nothing a little super glue can't fix. Ah, that's some fast acting glue. Alright, third time's the charm. I didn't hear a click, but I didn't hear it fall out. Good. And now, the peel. All right, so let's see if it turns on. So the time has come for the moment of truth, and I got Jasmine here as a witness in case it explodes and the house catches fire. And Theo, too. We got Theo here. Oh, don't knock anything over. And Momo. Even when you know what you're doing, it's still nerve-wracking when you turn it on for the first time. Let's see. Is it turning on? No. <laughs> what happened? What did you do? It's not working. Well. Back to the drawing board. Okay, I finally got it to power cycle, now I'm just waiting for it to post. Apparently, power supplies don't like it when you reuse cables from uh, 
other power supplies that are a different brand. So I'll make sure to uh, use EVGA brand. Basically the, the SATA cable I had attached, the SATA power cable I had attached to this was uh, the wrong cable type. Oh, looks like we're getting a post and it's booting straight to Windows. Didn't even, didn't even have to go through BIOS, okay. Uh, all right, use the cables that come with your power supply. Don't reuse ones from other ones. That's the lesson. So I reinstalled that hard drive using the correct power supply cord and it seems to be smooth sailing now. I finally got it to go into BIOS. I'm so used to my Asus ROG where it has the splash screen at the beginning and I guess by default this motherboard doesn't do that so I just turned it on and started spamming the delete key until I got into BIOS and it worked. So I'm gonna mess out around with BIOS, make sure that XMP is enabled and uh, yeah. I did it. Look at this powerful baby boy. Several days later. And now I got the decals in the mail. Just gonna pop these things on and then that's that's it. It's done. It's ready. Unfortunately, uh, the tripod holder for my phone snapped and broke whenever I tried to attach the phone one time. So uh, don't get cheapo ones from Ross. So I wasn't able to prop the phone up. I had to use shining the light of my laptop underneath it to try and place the, uh, the decal in the first place because there's really no way that I could actually place this without any sort of light coming from underneath causing like a shadow for the edge and everything like that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do all the side panels and then I'll show you guys the finished thing. All right. So that was the tiny giant PC. Honestly, I personally think it came out looking pretty great. And after running a few tests, the performance is spot on with what it was before. Thermals aren't that much hotter than it was in my previous case, which is pretty good because this case actually has a few less fans than my last one did. I don't know if any of you guys noticed in the uh, the glamour shots, but I actually added some cable extensions by Thermaltake. And these are actually a little bit different from the kind of cables that you would plug directly into the power supply. They just sort of extend off of the actual cables that came with it. I wanted to get some custom cable extensions from a place like Cable Mod um, to have that sort of black, orange to white, sort of keeping with the rest of the theme and the uh, the color scheme of Haikyu. But those are pretty expensive and apparently they aren't even taking any new orders until about February or something like that. And I couldn't wait. I also added a couple of cheap neon LED strips that I found on Amazon for about, I think $20 or so. And I think they look great, they look killer. And I don't know why this is, but as soon as I turned the system on, it just defaulted to that orange color that matches perfectly with the theme of the build. So I didn't even have to download any any extra software or anything like that. It, it just sort of out of the box was the exact color I needed. So that's awesome. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys wanna see me gaming on this little bad boy, then head on over to twitch.tv slash Bryson, where I stream every, uh, I stream, and with that, have a great day. Mm -hmm.